Hi, it's Kelly here. In this video, I'm going to do something a little bit different, which is uh, basically scare the pants off of you. Normally, I like to keep my messages pretty positive, uh, but it's important that uh, you understand what we're facing right now, and so it's going to require me to explain that to you. Um, I've been noticing in the sky, particularly in the last two, three weeks, and sometimes I lose track of the weeks. Couldn't have been longer. But I've noticed that the sky has been full of clouds, like miniature cumulonimbus clouds. As far as the eye can see, is like row after row after row after row. And maybe you've observed much the same thing, where you are too. This is not normal. Um, and uh, you know, it was, a, it was about a year ago or so when I saw in the sky, uh, driving down the, the highway, the state highway, there were three cumulonimbus clouds. Those are those beautiful clouds, big thick ones, um, very complex looking clouds, and they looked like triplets. Now this would be the first time in recorded history that, that there would be three cumulonimbus clouds looking identical. Uh, regardless how far back you went and how many billions or trillions or quadrillions of clouds there have been in the sky, they're never the same. They're like snowflakes. And these, these clouds, two of them were almost identical and the third one was real close. And right now we have just a bunch of miniature cumulonimbus clouds, one after the other. Boom, 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 boom. And why is that? Well, if we look at clouds, we can, th there's an answer there. You know, generally we think of clouds as being not very definitive, you know, because uh, they can change based on the wind current, right? And they change shapes and this, that, and the other. So we, it's hard for us to say, oh, well, clouds mean anything, you know? Uh, however, let's look at what comprises a cloud. A cloud is made of water is their content and their shape is determined 100%, 100,000 by the electromagnetic fields, the net fields that are impacting that cloud. It's very, very precise. It's not haphazard at all. And you might say, well, the wind can shift the cloud. Well, the wind is made from electromagnetic fields. So it's all one and the same. So if the clouds are looking identical, it means because if there's a, an identical uh, electromagnetic field is repeating itself. And that's what we have now. Now, it just so happens that these clouds around me don't look identical, although I, I did notice the other day that some of them looked like they had repeating facets of the cloud over and over again, which was kind of bizarre. They look like the, uh, the letter G, as a matter of fact, over and over again. Uh, and so what's going on has to be that there's an increasing amount of the 5G cell mass, et cetera, et cetera, being implemented because the clouds are being impacted by the electromagnetic fields and never before in history have we had repeating electromagnetic fields of this magnitude going out into the sky. Now this is important because our bodies are 70 percent water and these electromagnetic fields are also going through us. So instead of having what are called fractal shapes of the water in our body, it's being, it's being repeating shapes in our body, and that's irritating because a, a, an intermittent re, uh, EMF, you know, which would be a sound, some, some we cannot hear, but they, they all emit sounds just so we don't hear them with our human ears, uh, are affecting the water in our body, and in a way it has never happened before. So it's irritating to the function of our body. Just like a cell or any phone is ringing that you cannot turn off or, or an alarm clock that you cannot turn off is irritating. Even the blinker on your car you might find as you turn it off because it becomes irritating. 
Uh, and so that's what's happening is this being this irritation. So, and it's affecting me and personally, my leg, which I've been dealing with now for over a year, is getting worse. And just in the last week, I've gained six pounds, despite the fact that my diet has been really, really good. Uh, I think one night I had a couple bites of some cookies, whatever. And that was it. And, and a couple, a little, a tiny bit of ice cream. But I've gained six pounds, despite the fact that I'm eating properly. And I've been, really been studying, you know, what's going on with my leg at a level that probably few people, if anybody, has ever done looking to see how I can repair it, and I've been trying everything under the sun to make it happen, and it's not working because it's not metabolic. Metabolic is, you know, that's like the insulated, what we get, our food is metabolic because it's got, it's insulated, and it works that way. So you eat something, and you might not feel it for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes. You know, particularly if you eat something, the wrong thing, you might find 20, 30 minutes later you don't feel so good. Or if you eat a salad, maybe 10 or 20 minutes, you start to feel, oh, I feel pretty good, you know? That sort of thing. But I have an electrical problem with the, with the uh, metal rod in my back that acts as an antenna. And so regardless of what kind of metabolic approaches I take, the antenna is sending signals down to my leg so that it's disrupting what's, go what's supposed to go on. Or maybe it's not sending signals. Maybe that's the problem. Um, so with, with more and more of these clouds, formations of a repeating nature, a whole bunch of miniature cumulonimbus clouds, one after the other after the other, for weeks on end, tells me that we're being bombarded, and that's why my leg has gotten worse, and that I've gained this weight. I can actually see on my leg a swelling. You know, it goes down to the constricted area where it's like been like a bad, a, like a, a burn on my skin, a redness, and then it's constricted, and then above that is swollen on the one side in particular, on the outside area. So it's really, the information I'm sharing with you is really important to me personally, and, uh, and, it, and it's affecting you too, even if you haven't quite noticed it yet, or maybe you haven't attributed what's going on in your life, the extra stress, to the fact that the water formations in our body are being disturbed by 5G and even our smart meters, et cetera. Which th those are particularly bad. They put out AC and DC, and they spike every, every few seconds, 24 hours a day. So what I'd like you to do, and to do this immediately, and I mean, as soon as you finish watching this video, get in your car, if you can, and go to the store, Get yourself some copper wire. The thicker, the better. Go to a hardware store. That's where you can get thicker wire. At uh, Walmart, where I live, at least, they have only the thinnest wire. So I bought like 18 gauge. 10 gauge is a much thicker wire. So you want to get your wire. If, if This is if you have ceiling fans. Uh, you, you measure the blade of your ceiling fans, and then you get... You double the, the length of your wire. Now this wire has already been twisted. You might be able to see it if I bring it close to the camera. There. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your untwisted wire and bend it in half. I've made other videos about this. I'll leave a link for it so you can watch how I do it. I'm not going to do that in this video because I want to keep I don't want the video to run too long. So then you take this wire that you've bent in half and you get yourself a power drill if you don't have one, pick one of those up too. Stick the, it's easier, I find, to stick the looped end into, the, into there, tighten it down, and run it gently. And it will oh, hold the other end with the pliers. And it will gently twist, and you'll feel it. At some point, it wants to buckle. When it wants to buckle, you stop. And then you take these wires, and you put at least one on each blade of your ceiling fan. I would, li I would think that the, the looped end should be uh, towards the center because you want this to go out. It, it probably doesn't make a lot of difference, but, you know, and, and then this open end uh, on to, towards the outside. Tape it down with, with uh, packing tape. So get yourself copper wire, a drill if you need it, and packing tape, clear packing tape. Tape these down, turn it on. 
People ask me how long should they run it. Well, how long does the, the, the tower is operating? How long, you know, how long is your smart meter running? It's running 24 hours a day, and every few seconds it's putting out spiked energy. So you put this on your ceiling fans, and you'll find that you sleep better for the first night, and you'll f feel more energized the next day. Put one on each one. If you have multiple ceiling fans, I would suggest you put them on all of them. I highly recommend that you do that. If you are so swamped with something critical that you have to go to the hospital to visit somebody in the hospital or that of that nature, I understand that you go tomorrow morning or go after after you go to the hospital and, and get yourself this this wire so that you can make it because the because people ask me when should I do this and based on the cloud formations I would say you should have done it three weeks ago four weeks ago um, that we can do it now. It will have an instant impact because it's, because you're producing frequencies, they happen at the speed of light and faster. So you can change the environment. Um, they've gotten a jump on us somehow. I don't know what they've been. I haven't been following what they're up to, but obviously they are. Uh, today, out by my car, there is a long pole. It looks like it's one of those poles that they pound into the ground so that they could put in a. Uh, uh, a telephone pole some, or, or some kind of pole and maybe they're going to be putting 5G up on my street. I don't know. Just saw it this morning. And it's got one's got a, this, this pole that's get thinner and thinner and then it's got a, a cone on the end basically. Sharp point. And then down the road just a little bit you know 50 yards there's another thing that looks like a, it looks like the pole that's in front of my apartment is supposed to go inside that. So it looks like they're going to pound the ground uh, maybe to put in more. So we got to get on top of this. Um, after you do this, go ahead and order some heartfelt energizers because you can put those on fans and they can go like 2,000 to 2,500 RPMs a minute. Get the 300 millimeter because it's four times stronger than the than the 200. So, and particularly if you're on a tight, tight budget, strongly recommend you get the 400 because you're going to get four times the bang for your buck. If you can, af maybe some of you can afford to do it once a month to order them, or maybe you can just order them now with your credit card and pay it off because the value that you get from them running now is better than, than uh, excuse me, I'm going to cough here for a moment. <coughs> <coughs> So go ahead and uh, get as many of them as you can now. You'll also save on shipping and then just pay it off as best you can. It's worth paying pay a few dollars interest if uh, they get these things going because it's a life and death matter. Uh, you know, I'd like to live longer rather than shorter and uh, the way that my leg has been going. Um, you know, some of the evidence is in the, in the direction of it being shorter because I haven't found a way to control this and I believe it's related to the sky that, that my leg is in the last week has, has uh, gone downhill and regardless of I mean I have studied this thing like crazy and I'm able to, to recognize things because of my own background of what is needed and I've done many 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 things and and it's getting worse so if you, if you want to help save a life, I uh, appreciate it. Um, and also that you will sleep better. People say they sleep better with this and they have more energy. And then we'll get those energizers going. Um, the good news is that when you do this, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the fractal, they're called fractal frequencies as the, the uh, irregularly shaped frequencies. When they bump into the repeating frequencies, the repeating frequency becomes fractal. So it's a daisy chain that you know that we can. So one unit can have a tremendous effect as how far it can go to affect this. So we can we we need to get ahead of them. So get those ceiling fans going. Go to the store immediately and get yourself the wire, a copper wire. Thicker is better. A power drill if you need it, 
and uh, the tape and get that running tonight before you go to bed. So I, I feel like I'm going to cough again. Now, <coughs> 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 um, thank you for bearing with me, and you take care, and God bless.